Parliament here in London on Monday. Uh, the Transport for London, uh, which affects everyone's lives here, can't really overstate that, is starting a new experiment at the Holborn Underground Station. It's one of London's busiest in the rush hour. 50 million people pass through it every year. And if you've ever been there, you know that it has three very steep escalators. Now, traditionally here in London on the Tube, uh, people stand on the right of the escalator if they just want to ride down. And those who want to march down do that on the left-hand side. But apparently that's not the quickest way to get people in and out of the station. So on Monday, two of the escalators, people will be asked to just ride and not walk. Now in a moment we'll hear the science behind how all of that works. But first, our very energetic editor, D. Sebastian, went to Holborn Tube Station to do a bit of running and walking. Listeners will remember that we used to broadcast from Bush House and this Holborn Tube Station was our local. So those of us who've worked for the BBC for rather a long time know this escalator really well. What I'm going to do in terms of this experiment, I'm going to time myself walking up. I'm not going to go very fast. I'm just going to walk slowly up. So here goes. I'm walking up on the left, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, I should say I'm now about halfway up. 13 seconds have elapsed. Keep going. It's very, very deep, this tube station, so good way to find out how fit I am. 27 seconds. Here we go. Nearly at the top. I stepped off the top. 38 seconds. Right, so I'll just get my breath back. Let's go back down to the bottom, and uh, I'll stand on the way up try and fight my way through the crowds to get onto the escalator. Quite unusually for me, I'm having to stand still. It feels very slow, but here we go. So we've got to 32 seconds. More people walking past me. Someone with a suitcase walking past me. <laughs> Nearly at the top. And we are going to get to a minute. Yeah, a minute. It's gone past. I'm just nearly at the top and I'm just stepping off the escalator. Now I'm going to stop the clock. One minute, ten seconds. Hi, can I just quickly ask you something? Next Monday they're going to stop people walking up the escalators. You've just walked up. Yes. Are you going to do as you're told on Monday? Um, I've been thinking about it. I always walk up. Um, Me too. <laughs> So it's going to be a problem. Yeah. They say it's going to be quicker if you don't walk up. Yes, I think they've worked out some, you know, some clever mathematician has worked it out. But maybe that's right. But I love walking up, so I really will carry on doing it. Do you always walk up the escalator? Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, on Monday they're starting this experiment. Yeah, here. they tried it before, right? Uh, yeah. But... What well, are you going to do? What you're told. Oh, I don't know. It's second nature, isn't it? What to walk up the escalator? <laughs> to walk up the stairs. It's part of the psyche <laughs> in London. Yeah. yeah. Faster. Good exercise. Can't bother to wait. Yeah. No. Last time they tried, they... I remember they were like shouting to everyone to stand, and good luck to them. <laughs> and Arthur, you look after this station. Yes. How are you going to stop people walking up? Well, we can't force people to do anything, to be honest. We can only ask uh, and advise them that it would be faster if they stay on both sides rather than, than walk up the stairs. You're convinced that it's going to work? Well, we can only presume and we can only hope and we can uh, hope that people will listen. Thanks, Arthur. Good luck. Thank you. That's Dee Sebastian riding and walking up and down those escalators at Holborn Station in London. Now, let's hear more about the ideas behind uh, Monday's experiment. Um, uh, he's not a clever mathematician, as we heard there, but Professor Ed Galea is director of the Fire Safety Engineering Group at the University of Greenwich, and he joins me on the line. Welcome to you, Professor Galea. Good morning. Um, now, why do you want people to stop walking on any side of the escalator, as we heard they're desaved about 30 seconds by marching up and out of the station. Uh, yes, but that experiment was flawed because we only want people to ride on the escalator when it's extremely congested at the base. When it's really congested at the base, you'll get a much better throughput, you get a better flow if everyone stands. And in fact, you'll find that if everyone stood on the escalator when it's crowded, your journey time will be significantly reduced. It, it, that, is, that is counterintuitive because you'd think that the more of a rush there is, the quicker you walk up and get out, you know, the, yes, the easier but, it is. 
Yes, it is counterintuitive, uh, but um, the uh, the mathematics works. I mean, the, the reason is that you've got you keep one lane for riders and uh, uh, and one lane for walkers, and a walker takes up much more space than a rider, and so you have reduced capacity on the escalator, which means everyone has to slow down, even your walkers. Ah, so it's the collective benefit rather than the individual time saved. Um, you've done studies in London, in Shanghai, in Barcelona. D- does the same hold true across every, every uh, area that you, you looked at, every city? Well, I mean, we, we saw lots of interesting behaviour. Uh, when we did our studies in, uh, in Shanghai at People's Square Underground Station, what we found was uh, people didn't uh, ride the escalator, uh, sorry, didn't walk up the escalator during rush hour. The whole group of people just rode. And we initially assumed that this was just simply down to a cultural difference, that uh, uh, people in, uh, in Shanghai just preferred to, uh, uh, to, to ride. But what we now think is that it's something like the wisdom of the crowd. The crowd has figured out that they'll get through these congested periods much quicker if they ride up the escalator. So it's a sensible crowd behavior. Whereas when, sorry. No, that's okay. I I was just going to say that you've got some raised eyebrows here in the studio because it does seem like it would be a cultural thing. I mean, London commuters have a very particular mindset. And what I'm wondering is, you know, despite the studies you've done, do you think you can actually change people's behaviour? Well, I think one, I mean, the, the, the London behaviour is a learnt behaviour and we're very good at learning uh, new things. And so I think eventually we will get people to understand that during congested periods, everyone gets through quicker. Even if you are a walker, you will get through quicker. So if your objective is to get to your destination quicker, be it as a walker or a rider, if you ride the escalator during congestion, you will get there quicker. And well, we, can, we can teach people to, to, to understand that. Professor Galia, um, Mina was already making that argument <laughs> before you came on air. So you have at least one supporter in the studio. I understand, um, Professor, the, the concept of the collective speed, so to speak. So if everyone's standing, because then you actually get more sta- space on the escalator. But where are we saving the time for the walkers or the runners up? Are you saving the time that you don't get a bottleneck getting yes. onto the escalator itself? Is that where the time is being saved? Yes, indeed. You're, the walkers will actually save time if they ride in congestion because they will get onto the escalator quicker. Your time from point A to point B is not simply the time on the escalator. It's the time to get onto the escalator you've got to take into consideration as well. And if you reduce that bottleneck at the base, you can get on the escalator quicker. So here's the thing that that um, bothers me. If I get on the escalator with your uh, just standing policy, no walking, and I find that there are five or six empty steps in front of me uh, t- between me and the next person, are you saying it wouldn't be quicker for me to just walk up those steps? No, if there are five or six empty steps in front of you, then there's nothing stopping you from walking up and filling those spaces. Okay, so walking is okay in some circumstances. Well, if there's space in front of you, yes, um, yes, okay. in, indeed, it, 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 it would be better if you if you walked up to the point where you need then to stop and then uh, not. Uh, so uh, we always do. Okay, um, I think Giles, are you? Would you comply with this? I'm not a good complier. <laughs> I'm definitely not a complier. Well, I think, uh, Professor Edgar, you're going to have your work cut out for you a bit because as we heard uh, with Dee and and the commuters at Holborn, a lot of them are already resisting this, but it's a strong argument. I was looking at some of the other etiquette around the world, you know, with uh, subway stations, tube stations, because it is very much individuals in an extremely communal situation. And and this is absolutely the best example I found. Um, In India, there's a 50 rupee penalty. That's about 70 US cents. 50 rupee penalty for riding on the roof. (laughs) (laughs) Not something you see in London. Um, I have to say I've never actually seen it in Delhi, but there you go, it exists. Stay with us. There's more to come on Weekend.